Yo, 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 what's going on, everybody? This is Brandon. Stefan. Welcome back to Christ on Infinite Rants. Welcome back to Whip Flash Wednesday. Uh, thank you guys so much for sticking with us today. I know a lot of us are busy with work, so if you're catching us live, thank you so much. In the premiere, first time we're doing a freaking premiere on Comics Kings. Also, you know, if you guys catch the replay, thank you guys so much. Drop a comment. Let us know what you guys think of this video. Leave a thumbs up so you can support the channel. Another way to support the channel free of charge to subscribe. Helps us go a long way. Helps our growth and keeps us pumping out content for you guys. Today is Christ on Infant Rant. So we are going to be talking about a different subject every week. Uh, this week, we are going to be focusing on writer James Tynan, who has blown up lately with something is killing the children. The Department of Truth, Wind. I know I'm forgetting probably one other book, but am I forgetting another book? That, Batman. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Well, yeah. That, but he's leaving it, so I don't really, I'm not really counting it. But like, he's blown up. He's blown up, you know. And he's become Absolutely. one of the top names of the comic book industry. So we're going to be talking about books that he has put out before something is killing the children. You know, while he was still doing work for DC, kind of doing some independent work on the side. Uh, but now everyone's reading his work, and we just want to let you guys know, here's other stuff that he's done that's just as good, if not better, than what he's doing today. Link, thank you so much for joining me, my man. Thank you for having me. It's always always fun when we get together and chop it up, whatever it is. Exactly, about. man. Exactly, man. This is your show just as much as it is mine. But before we kind of get into the actual context of today's show, a quick shout out to Nick Comic Culture for dropping his video today to kick off Whiplash Wednesday. Make sure you guys check that out. Station, my friend. And then make sure you guys head over to the Blame Fable show, which is live uh, Wednesdays at 1.30 overall over there. And he has a lot of guests every single week talking about everything pop culture. Station to Fable and everyone coming from over there. Go over to TM Nerdy, who just did his video with Cryo Prime, everyone's favorite toy sculptor, Station. And then we are, wow, we're here. Can you believe it? We made it this far. But after that, we go to Big Herm and Sam's Tangle Web. They're going to be dropping their review. I do not know which book they're doing because I haven't heard from them today. Station to them anyway, but I'm sure it'll be great, just like it was last week when they did Daredevil with Bullseye Bob. Then we're going to head over to the Tomorrow Show for What Are You Making? They have a banger list of Content creators in the comic book community, also a lot of great indie writers. David Bohr, um, I believe, is doing uh, Killer Queens, and they have um, many writers among among David Bohr over there. So, station to everybody. Thank you guys Absolutely. so much for checking out this video. Um, be well to each other. Be excellent. Be excellent. But yeah, James Tynan the fourth, kicking off his career in DC, and and I believe. Uh, 2000 right during the new 52 when he yeah. wrote the backup stories to scott snyder's critically acclaimed batman run okay so this is like right at the beginning when scott snyder was diving into his lore of the court of owls talent in particular was a big focus on james tynan's early career as he did write an 18 issue story about that uh, called the night of the owls and then he later had talon crossover into Red Hood, and I believe issue 24. So Scott Lobdell took a break, which is probably the best thing that ever happened to that book. Um, and James Tynan came in to write that, and I thought it was a very good Red Hood story, Red Hood and the Outlaws. Um, I believe Eddie Barrows did that art. Um, no on way. That. <clears throat> I believe, I, I don't quote me on it, because I read it for a Scott Lobdell interview when we first did Creator's Corner. But okay. I believe it was 24, because his... Red Hood didn't. I it wasn't that long in New Fifty Two, no, yeah. um, so he did that, which was great. Which all of that success led him and Scott Snyder to launch one of my favorite stories, right? Which is Batman Eternal, which is probably the biggest Kickstarter of James Tynion's career. It's yes. my favorite story. Um, Link, how did you like that book? Uh. I didn't read all of it. I read the like, like the first two arcs. But from what I read, I really enjoyed. Like, um, I wasn't too big on week. That was a weekly, if I remember. It was a very. It was a weekly book. Yeah. I uh, I wasn't ever too big on weekly books, but that was one of the ones that kind of was like, okay, you know, weekly books. Because I always felt like you know that's under the gun. Like, what can you really put out so quickly? Right. Um, that's quality. But that was one of the few books that 
really impressed me with like the weekly material. Oh, yeah, that was the only book in my experience of being in this hobby that had that success. Now, Batman and Turtle wasn't just James Tiny. You had Scott Snyder, you had Tim Seeley, Kyle Higgins, uh, Ray Fox, all kind of culminating uh, with uh, Dustin Wynn, Jason Fabic, uh, Gillian March, as we know now today from Carmen, Joker, Batman, right, was on that book. Alvaro Martinez Bueno was on the book, you know. Um, oh, Let's Gotham see. Sirens. Got is that is that a James Gilly? Sign? That's Paul oh, Dini, Gillian March. Gillian March. Yeah, Gillian just, March. Um, you know, and you had a lot of talented artists that are now big today drawing yeah. those issues um, in that book. That's and it was a nice. very centric Gotham story, which focused on the car, the Falcone family, eventually building up some of our bigger villains to kind of unsolve this mystery. Um, and the Bat family really had to come together, all of them except for Dick Grayson, because unfortunately Dan DiDio became publisher and said, see ya, Dick, we're killing you in, in a battle of the cow, so we don't like you. So you had everyone there except for Dick Grayson. Um, yeah, I know. Screw you, DiDio. But anyway. Um, <laughs> you had to take Dick out. That's right? Um, but, you know, the, it was just honestly my favorite Batman story that did not involve Joker or any of, like, the essential villains. It had essential yeah. villains. Like, we we saw the Owl in there, who we don't really get to see a lot. We, we saw Hush in there. Yeah. Um, we saw Red Hood, kind of. It was honestly the most invigorating Red Hood story, in my opinion, that we've had since New yeah. 52. Because Red Hood was now, okay, we're, we're seeing him with the Bat family and how he's interacting with Batwoman, how he's uh, interacting with Spoiler, who is a big part of the story. Um, we also saw Julia Pennyworth in there. We saw um, Bluebird, which I think she made her first appearance in that. And that's one of James Tynan's favorite Bat characters. We saw Tim Drake in there. We saw Damian Wayne in there. Honestly, guys, there was not a DC, a Robin character, or like a Gotham character, with the exception of Nightwing and Joker, that was in that book. Right. Penguin was in there, um, and everything just culminated to this big project, and it really told a gritty story of Gotham, uh, which is something that we don't get to see a lot of days because Batman is so overshadowed and Joker is so overshadowed, and they basically control Gotham. Those two yeah. characters, yeah. sales wise, production wise, but this is like. They can take a step back, right? Jim Gordon's not Jim really Gordon's in it. Yeah, yeah. Jim, Jim Gordon wasn't really in it because Jim Gordon is in jail. That's like a good portion of his why he's in jail, you know? So you got a lot of uh, Henry, Her not Harry, uh, we got a lot of Bullock in there. Oh, um, yeah, which was, Harvey. Yeah. We got a lot of Harvey Bullock in there, which was very enjoyable. Um, yeah. If you guys did like three Jokers or if you guys like any of Jeff Vermeer's work, Dustin Wynn was the artist of most of his work and Jason Fabick from Three Jokers they were basically the helm artists so that's reason enough to go yeah. check that book out i can't yeah. i can't sell it to you guys enough um there are three volumes i believe they're 30 dollars a piece by the way all the links for these books we're going to be talking about are in the description below for you to pick up um i just want to take the time for you guys to check this out you know if you guys are liking game tiny into batman well this is how we can play with other bat characters and in this same year, same year, guys, 2014, huge year for James Tynan. He also launched The Woods. I haven't gotten around to read it yet, but I know a lot of people um, very much enjoy the book. Did you get to read that one, Link? I read um, the first arc online. I've been trying to track down. I'm a big fan of just collecting floppies, but uh, I found one so far. It's I, mean, I haven't read it because it's ahead, but it's issue 10. But um, this was a... Kind of like a, I want to say like a precursor. Something's like killing the children, in the sense that um, kids are the main antagonists, and they're like so like this high school gets transported to like the middle of these woods that are surrounded by just creatures, monsters, whatnot. And they have to figure out a way to get out of that essentially. So there's a lot of death involved with that, you know, in high school students. So it's a uh, very no, not the same. What would you call it? Theme, not the same. Like theme. not like the same kind Set of up. lore or the same yeah. kind of tone. Yeah. I would say tone is a better word, oh. but kind of the same genres, different tone. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Uh, I enjoyed that. I'm surprised that that one's not been. I'm. You know, it took them a long time to. Um, have they even optioned some Killing the Children yet? They have. Fine. Okay, they just haven't cast anyone. Okay. I'm surprised it took them that long to option that one, but um, the woods is a concept that is just waiting. 
it, it would just be great for television, you know, not even spec wise, it'd just be an entertaining watch. But um, from what I read in the first arc, I'm a little uh, backlogged, of course. But from what I've read, it's on par with Something's Killing the Children. If you know, if you like that's, stuff like that, that's I, awesome. I yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. Have yeah. you read it? I, I have not, you know, I'm, I'm again, I'm very backlogged in especially my indie books. That's no something way. that I keep on my radar. My LCS just has not been able to order it. Um, and I do like to order through them a whole lot. Uh, by the way, you guys, this show is sponsored not only by Bacon Bacon, but by coffee. Cheers. You know. <laughs> ah. Most comic shows pull out a bottle of bourbon. Well, we pull out a bottle of co- We pull out some coffee from the Keurig. Fresh out of it. Um, got my pumpkin spice creamer. How do you like your coffee? Ooh. Uh, you know, I have like four or five different creamers at any given time. I'm yeah. Lately, it's been my thing. I like to, I'm trying to experiment with like the perfect brew, perfect blend type stuff. I've got like three different, I need more, but I have like three different bags of coffee in the cabinet cupboard right now. Um, it really depends. Right now, I've got some, uh, some almond creamer in here. Uh, yeah. Cannot go wrong with it. Um, let's segue. We're speaking of Batman, you know, because a lot of people, a misconception about Tynan was he, he didn't, he took Batman by swarm and they're like, oh my gosh, who is this guy? Right? Because uh, James Tynan was only supposed to write like uh, one or two story arcs, one story yeah, arc, I, going I, into I, 5G, because eventually okay. John Ridley was going to take over the book. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But once DiDio it was no longer associated with DC Comics, they kind of had to revamp and push everything back. It's like, hey, James, you have anything else to write? He's like, yeah, I got the story hunched up, you know, and him and Jorge Jimenez just went to town on it, uh, which was, you know, that's what we saw with Joker War, their dark designs, um, and then uh, we were getting into everything else now with, like, Miracle Molly, and uh, now we are in, we're, we're in Fear State, which is a very good story. You know, issue one, issue 113 is, pro- is dropping the day you're going to see this, or no, it dropped it dropped today it dropped it's dropping like when you you guys are going to see this yeah you could get it on tuesday but for me it's wednesday because you know um my lcs is very much like hey guys wednesday's new comic book day not tuesday though we have it for you i'm like uh no well i want to come on now (laughs) but the reason why james tynan is so methodical with his batman characters not only is he great at horror as we've seen in his kind of his flagship titles that he's launching right now but also this big bad omnibus i have uh, that i have oh my gosh this is probably my favorite story of his batman um the de- detective comics that he did in rebirth um so yeah there we go so this story oh, like i know i know you love it so yes. i'm gonna let you just go off on it um i was uh I t- like, took a few breaks in my collecting years, well, most notably from like um, 2011 to 2015. So when this came out, like the summer of 2016, I was still kind of diving back into stuff, like getting my feet wet. Um, I kind of left right before New 52 happened. So I only read a select few New 52 titles in between that gap. And this was like, when Rebirth happened, I was like, oh, sweet. It's like a perfect time for me to kind of jump back in heavy and uh I had not really heard of Tynan at the time so this was like my really first exposure with him and I just thought the lineup was sweet I was like I love Tim Drake he's my favorite Robin he's the best Robin as we all know um Um, sorry I what Dick Grayson enters the chat (laughs) Dick Grayson is the coolest Robin the best Robin we all know is Tim Drake but how do we but, measure best? Are we talking about like intelligent leadership? Like if we're talking he intelligent, figured I give out you. He was Batman, all right? He's just, he's probably yes. And um, so could. It... Hey, okay, let let me say. Am I doing a bit? Am I doing okay? I'm back. All right, so let me yeah. put it this way: if if Batman were to go away, Bruce Wayne, right? I feel Tim Drake, maybe given more time since he's still portrayed as younger, would be the best fill in. I think. I've, actually, Dick might be the worst villain. I love Dick, but if you're talking, talking in terms of, I love him as Nightwing though. He made his own thing as Nightwing. But people filling in the role of Batman, it would probably be best to go to Damien or Tim. I mean, yeah, I'm so glad you didn't say Jason. But... No, no, Jason's um, Red Hood forever. I mean, That's... Tim is very intelligent, and I, and I think like his vision and his intelligence goes a long way. Yes, I think in combat, I still think Damien is probably like one will be one of the better Robins in in Absolutely. combat and hand to hand just because of how he was trained, how he was brought up. 
But Dick's leadership is honestly like outstanding. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. yeah, I, I like him. I don't want to see him in, in the bat suit ever again because I think he's just so established now as Nightwing. Yes. But back to the content of this story. I, there, well, okay, yeah. There's a reason why Tim Drake was used. It wasn't because that is unspokenly like hands down James Tynan's favorite Robin. Like I'm sure, I'm sure he he like he goes crazy. Like we've I've talked about it. Um, and he said on multiple occasions, like, yeah, all I want to do is write Tim Drake, hands down. Thank you, James. That's you, Mr. Tynan. You you understand. You understand. But um, we have another fan favorite. We have uh, Cassandra right here, my favorite bad girl. I, she's not the perfect bad girl. I know. Let's give that to Barbara, of course. But wasn't Cassandra bad girl for six months? No, way longer than six months. What? Can no, that was know? um, that was Stephanie. Sorry, that was Stephanie. Stephanie. Yeah, that Stephanie, was Stephanie. Yeah. Sorry, Stephanie. They. I don't. That was I, Stephanie. I remember when that was happening. I kind of didn't mind it because this is around the time when Dick and Damien were taking up the cow. Right, right, right. And I was like, so I was like, it's all new for like six months. Her costume. I didn't mind her costume actually. No, no, her like, costume was dope. Her yeah. costume was dope, one hundred percent. Um, I was just like, I don't know. I get them. To, I get them get juggled there. sometimes. I get them juggled sometimes. So I was like, No, yeah, yeah. I uh, I was like, I called her. I was talking about it earlier, and I had said, "What, Cassie Brown?" I was like, "No, no, no, it's Stephanie." And then Cassie is, well, Cassandra. But um, just a, I love Kate Batwoman. Yes, uh, awesome character. Just the whole lineup. And then it's like they had Clayface in here, and he ended up being a surprise. A very enjoyable surprise. Like I uh, never thought Clayface would work as like a good guy, and just just the teamwork in this book. Um, it t- it took me by surprise. I'm not gonna lie. Just the setup with the team, the stuff they were doing with Gotham. I feel like like the magistrate was kind of play- not them per se, but the idea right. of something like that was played with in this title first. Right. Um. um now so- a lot of a lot of writers have taken up writing Batwoman. You know, you had Greg Rucka and J.H. Williams. You had uh, Marguerite Bennett in Rebirth with Fernando Blanco, which was also very enjoyable as well. Uh, but this story, I think, really like just showed us how Batwoman is able to mingle. Yes. You know, because she has a lot of family issues. She doesn't come from a great place. Um, and also, she, she's LGBT, so that's also, that's also been like a very core struggle of her character is kind of finding herself, establishing her differences, Sorry. And this is really like one of the first times, or one of like the most like driven Batwoman and Tim Drake stories where they're interacting with the team around them. We see Tim Drake's maturity in this book, and the whole premise is actually surrounded around Batwoman and Batman. Um, there's like this war coming, right? And there's like a lot of shit going on in Gotham as there usually is because Gotham is never a peaceful place. It's like, yeah, it's like being an Orleans Saints fan, you know? It's like it's never peaceful there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um or chris brown's music it's never really that peaceful you know um hey. i love chris brown i love chris brown but some people beg to differ um but you know they have to assemble a team tim drake is chosen as the leader we got uh we got spoiler in there just because of how unique she is and how good she is and kind of like backlogging stuff what's a backlog i don't know but stephanie yeah, does um, and then Cassandra is pretty niche of a character, you know, she's just very good. gritty. And yeah. honestly, I think like if you need someone just jumping out of a shadows, I wouldn't ask for anyone better than Cassandra. Clayface was a great addition, you know, as we said. Yeah. This is the first time I ever gave a shit about Clayface, honestly. Yeah. Came on um, a left field and it worked. Right. It worked so well. And there was an arc in here that was so Clayface driven. And it was like this team cares, you know? Yep. Like, that's how you captured the heart of this team is how they showed that, oh, yeah, Clayface is kind of, he's getting a second chance, but with people that care about him, right? So like, I, I, think- I knew they were doing a good job. I'm not trying to spoil it too much, but that issue where Batwoman and him came and that yeah. crosshair, okay. And yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. no, I, you know, when I found myself, I was like, no, you know, so that's when I knew, I was like, wow, he's doing a bang up job if I care about the character this much right. to the point where I'm just like. Right, but like what yeah. was so heartfelt was how much the other characters cared about him, which showed, yes. I thought this book had a lot of empathy in the Bat family, which you never Absolutely. see, you never yeah. see. And the most exciting part is Batman is not in this book. 
at all. Like he's barely in there. Like maybe like once or twice. Like, uh, a book yeah here here and there but he's let they're left to their own devices for the most part to it's, figure out stuff it's the tim drake show and yeah. eddie barrows did a fantastic job with the killed artwork it. absolutely yeah. killed it and i know eddie barrows isn't exactly the like the household name but Let's um you know right but you know the costume was great it felt very classic this yeah. really had a classic like kind of like a cia story you know but yeah. so central to Gotham, and it just made it feel refreshing. At the same time, very there were a lot of new concepts in there. Um, you also had uh, Rohe Antonio drawing some of the pages in here, who we know oh. from Co- Ro- Ro- um, Rohe Antonio was doing Conan, and we had nice. um, Andy McDonald, who was doing Wonder Woman. We had Riley Rossmo, who uh, had a great, 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 great Martian man on her story. Doing, oh, Steve um, Orlando. Yeah. Steve Orlando, who did some of the story in here as well in the backups. And we had uh, Christopher Sabila, who was great. Marguerite Bennett, Hatter Prince, and uh, uh, Eber Fiera. Uh, a little fun fact, you missed someone. Um, this is two issues into the arc, but uh, people who love uh, Nice House on the Lake, Alvaro Martinez. Alvaro Martinez, did bueno. quite a few arcs or issues for detect- the Detective Comics run. So uh, I think this issue in particular was done by... Oh, Barrow. So, if you guys like Tynan, you like his nice house on the lake? Right. Detective. Avaro Martinez Bueno is an artist that we are going to talk about as well. You yes. know, following following Detective Comics, uh, we also saw James kind of dabble into James... Oh, uh, not James. Wow, 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 wow. John Constantine. What did I just say, everyone? Um, well, that was actually kind of before. He also, in 2015, this is all like before Rebirth, he did Batman slash Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which... I'm not a big Turtles fan, um, but this was also a collaboration with him and J.H. Williams III. So it was, the art looked great. I remember going to my LCS, flipping through it. So if you like a Batman and Ninja Turtles crossover, um, I know a lot of people love the book. And look at that. You even got his Constantine sign. That's awesome. Yeah, I recently... Uh, to me by Eric the Stash. Eric the Stash. Who else was to say that? looks like a Qbert Uh This uh, Doyle. I... Doyle. Nice. Yeah, I, I have a few um tiny and sigs. I got my Batman Eternal Omnibus. That was the first thing I wanted him to sign. Cause nice. I was like I, I, and he he gave, he if it wasn't Kobe, he would have given me a hug. He's like, Yeah, if this was, if Kobe wasn't around, I'd give you a hug for bringing me this. <laughs> um you know, because <laughs> it's it's nice to see someone who's with your career since like day one or went back to your day one career, you know, because I wasn't collecting them, but I that was like absolutely. Um, Eternal was my first big exposure following Detective Comics. I'm like, I need more, and I got more. I was like, Yes. Um but I know it's Batman TMNT was very critically acclaimed by a lot of people. I um, missed. I was, I want to read that one. So I still haven't read that. I, I haven't read it because I'm not a big Turtles fan. But who knows? Maybe maybe I will. You know, I, maybe that'll turn you into a Turtles fan. Maybe it will. I think so. When I was growing up, I was so invested. It was like me and Star Wars were like dating each other, and I felt like everything else I would have like cheated on my girl Padme. It, you know, I had a huge thing for Natalie Portman, which just has not age, which is not going away. Well, understandable. You know, I'm like, hey, if little Anakin can get it, can get her. You know, go on now. <laughs> <laughs> anybody, you know, if he can you grow know? up and get the girl, we can all grow up. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah, you know. So, and and then I was like, oh wait, if that's what it takes, I gotta make a quick left turn, go to the dark side, and back. I'm not doing it. Uh, so, <laughs> but <laughs> let's be honest, people. But anyway, um. Yeah, I, I never really got into Turtles as a kid, never got into Pokemon, never got into much of that stuff. I'm, like, catching up on it now. I'm like, yeah, wow. You got, well, not to, you know, you've got, you're got you young enough I've got to everything, you. Everything's going to come in due time, you know. Yeah, right, right. Um, but, you know, following all of that, he wrote one of my favorite stories, which was Justice League Dark. Um, that yeah. was that was drawn by Alvaro Martinez Bueno. No way. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and I'll it think. was insane. You had Swamp Thing. You had uh, you had a little bit of Zatanna in there. You had Wonder Woman. You had Bobo. Come on, you had a book with Bobo, John Constantine in there. Bobo, you guys, come on. Um, and this is like, and you had Doctor Fate. A lot of the story was actually revolved around how Wonder Woman and this team, and you had Detective Chimp, which is Bobo, uh, figure out like kind of the the lore of Doctor Fate. Um. You had the Witching War, which was kind of a Wonder Woman-centric event, but it really wasn't Wonder Woman. It was how can Wonder Woman lead this mystical team to 
kind of protect against a lot of the dark forces in the, in the DC universe that we never really get to see. So it was my favorite iteration of Wonder Woman, um, probably until Michael Connor and Becky Cloonan started doing their thing with Wonder Woman, because I always like her when she's out of her Justice League element and we can, and out of her own like personal element, because like she's not tied down to anyone, she's leading a team and she's getting gritty, she's getting dark. And I love that. Um, it was a great mixture of fantasy and horror, so it kind of felt like a little bit of Once in Future, but more modernized and more... Um, and, and the coloring was great. I forget who did the colors, but shout out to the, whoever the colorist was. Again, it'll be in the description below, but I cannot push that story enough. And then it was later co-written by Rom V. So similar how Scott Snyder mentored James Tyne, and James Tyne is now patching the torch to Rom V, who wrote the last few issues of it, and now we have Justice League Dark excelling the way it is today. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I very much enjoyed Justice League Dark. I think at the time it was that and it was it was that in Justice League by Scott Snyder, which you could not pass down, which James Tynan also wrote some of that Justice League with Scott Snyder. He did the Legion of Doom arc, which I cannot Michael uh I sorry. I think I... Robson Roca was the artist. Michael or... didn't Michael Jenin do an issue or I just yeah. remember, like, okay, I don't know. Just um I want to say it was Robson Roca. I also I want to say it was like someone like Francis Manipal. Well, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but that that story arc, if you guys did read Snyder's Justice League, which you absolutely should, um, it was setting up kind of how the villains all played together. So you had like Joker, you had like Cheetah, you had uh, Lex Luthor, um, you had, uh, why am I not able to think of it right now? Mm -hmm. And then, and yeah, you you lead into Doom, you know, and you also have the Batman who laughs, which that was a story yeah. where they basically like captured him. Um, Doom Titan also wrote the one shot for the Grim Reaper, not the Grim Reaper, the the um the Grim Knight. Sorry. Oh he yeah. Like yeah. yeah, and and that was great because that also established that character who we saw in the Batman who laughs miniseries, um, and playing into kind of the different iterations of Batman following Metal, um, so. James Tynan is very trusted to Scott Snyder and helped him tell the stories that were so loved for a great period of time in DC Comics, almost like their new renaissance, I would say, yeah. um, was kind of when Snyder kind of took over like the helm and Tynan was like doing his thing on Detective Comics. Um, later, all of that would come to an end. His, um, his JLD, his Detective Comics, and that's where we are today, where he would pick up Batman, you know? He hasn't really had a very long career of writing, like, uh, like frontline titles, you know? Now he has Department of Truth, which is which was uh, nominated for an Eisner. It's already optioned. Something's killing the children. Uh, he has Wind. Have you uh, heard of a... Not to go off topic. Have you heard of a medic? A medic. Explain. M medic. It's M-E-M-E-T-I-K. I'm probably butchering it, but um, it was like I think it was like three or four issues. I want to say it was by Boom, but it was kind of like a horror series. I think it came out 2015, 2016 around there. Could be earlier, but uh, it was a horror series that like this meme was making people go crazy. You know, like the anti life equation or something like that. Once they saw it, or if you've seen Bird Box, anybody in that not so good movie. Um, it was very similar to that. Like once people saw this meme. They would go crazy. Right. And uh it was pretty interesting. Right. James Tennant's definitely got a eye and ear for horror. Right. And we're seeing that even now with a nice house yeah. on the lake, which is yeah. by Varma Tina's bueno frequent collaborator, as we've kind of discussed throughout this video. Um, you know, his Batman has been great, his Department of Truth has been exquisite, same with something that's killing the children. And what James Tynan has coming down the pipeline is more a nice house on the lake because it is 12 issues. We're getting the House of Slaughter coming out um, pretty soon this fall to get excited about, which is an extension of the story, which is something is killing the children, kind of going back into like the whole history lesson that's going to be spinning out of this arc that we've kind of gotten into with young Claire. Um, and Werther Del, Del Dera, I mispronounced that, is a fantastic artist. And they are telling this immaculate story just about like a, a girl who kills monsters that are killing children. And the children kind of have to help out Claire and it's like in the families, so it's like a, a big like mystery. It's almost like a murder mystery, but also like a lot of like fantasy elements and a lot of like um, unraveling. Reading like an Netflix title, this is honestly 
James Tynan's flagship book. I mean, and, and now, like, when you hear James Tynan is doing a book, you know, everyone wants on board. Now, it's it, you have a great career when you are most known for your indie books and you're writing Batman. Yeah. Which that's yeah. that's that's no like saying is Batman is bad. Batman is great, you know. I'm loving his Batman. Yeah. But that's his other titles are Eisner nominated. Bigger than I, yeah. Yeah. That's and a Batman's is his really his side job, and I guess that's why it's coming to an end, um, very shortly. But he's doing a lot. He's doing stuff with Substack, so he's gonna have another series coming out, more indie work, and he's launching his own industry called the Tiny Onion. Um. Nice. Which, which I, I found to be very cool, but Department of Truth <laughs> is basically playing off, if you want a book that is politically triggering for any political party, uh, that's the book for you. It unravels, it's basically playing like a lot of uh, conspiracy theories about American history, modernizing them, kind of telling a tale of, well, you know, what if, what if there is like this Illuminati, what if there is like shade of government in the dark that's like kind of hidden. It, it's very much Court of Owls themed but yeah. a lot darker and a lot more american I, it, history yeah with the mythology it's the whole um the masses the mass belief kind of gives something power you know that's a cool right concept. So, right a bunch right. of majority of people believe the world is flat let it be flat, flat you yeah. know or if you don't know about something but it's really going on behind your back well right. should you be scared of it you know right. or like um Ignorance is bliss. Right. Ignorance is bliss. That's another great theme. James Tynan is really good. He's been very excellent lately at giving us these thoughts, these very thought provoking elements in his stories, you know, in Department of Truth makes you think like it's almost like a headache thing, but it's a good headache thing. You know, when you can walk away from a book and question your life or like question stuff, you know, that tells a lot about the writer. Yes. You know, and, and Martin Simmons doing the art, which gives off major, major, major Bill Sienkiewicz vibes, yeah. uh, which is a perfect fit. James Tynan is very thoughtful about who he picks out for his talent, you know, yeah. um, to to be, to quote, like, kind of modern stuff. Like, he's very hip to, like, where everyone is in the industry. You know, even, like, if you're an aspiring artist or an aspiring writer, he probably has eyes on you, you know? Um, he's always looking for that next talent because I guess that's like the treatment that, that um, Scott Snyder gave to him, you know, in DC, uh, gave to him. And he, he wrote some very great stories early on and just built himself up over the years when he got a chance to write Batman. He said, nah, man, I don't have just one arc in me. I've written Batman before. I'm going to do it again. Right. Right. Yeah. That's I think uh, it's just crazy that how uh, not crazy, but just I find it a little peculiar that for how many people love his Batman run. No, but I've not really heard too many people discuss his detective work. I don't know if they're aware of it. Right. Or um, I don't know. But it's if you love his Batman, you love his detective, Batman Eternal. All phenomenal. They're Shout in fact, him. I probably like them better than this Batman run, but that's because I like I guess it's because I like seeing niche bat family characters get their spotlight. Um this new series that he's writing, or not really new, but this ongoing series that he's writing is very much focused on Batman and the new characters that he's bringing into this universe. Now, keep in mind, he's able to develop these characters while he's still doing other projects, which is which is great. And the time that he really had to put all of this together, get the scripts going, it really felt like he had this story for years. Yeah. you know. And he's like, oh, I have my chance. I'm not going to mess this up. And uh, he was only supposed to be there for one arc. Now he's like, writing a very critically acclaimed really Batman story, which yeah. would be a great animated series one day. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I would love to see Miracle Molly on the big screen. And it, it kind of like how we got a Harley Quinn animated show. I think this oh, would be... Yeah. I, I think they could get like a similar tone out of it, you know? And I think like if DC continues to do their animated shows, I think like this arc would be something that they can uh, develop over time. Um. And Punchline's character is honestly like it, they can do it in a way that like, kind of has an anime feel to it, but also like you can do so much of the character animation that you really would be able to do in live action. Kind of like uh, they could do like that blend, like the OG Teen Titans cartoon was kind of like yeah. anime ish, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
so it's it's just really cool to think about it. And those of you who are very reserved on his Batman run because they don't like new characters, well, here's here's the thing, right? During Scott Snyder's, we we did get the Court of Owls. We got Mister Bloom, who wasn't genuinely liked um, nowadays, and he's kind of left behind, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's arguably saying, hey, we haven't really gotten a key character since Hush, you know. Talent, yeah, great, fine. But really, it was like it's it's Hush is like kind of the biggest character of the modern Batman, you know. Um, other than you know Damien, I would say Damien, Hush, Talon. Oh, then yeah. we really haven't gotten many characters. We got Duke, but Duke is Duke. It hasn't really got his time to shine. We got Bluebird. Yeah, I was gonna say I think but, his time's still coming. But, right, um, I think I think there's still more for Bluebird and Duke to tell yeah. in the future. But for right now, I think the three that we mentioned are very safe to say. But. Now that Tynan created new characters, right? Tom King's yeah. really did not. It did, really didn't. Gotham Girl didn't really go anywhere. Um, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, so it's now. Now you got these new characters, and people are complaining. I'm like, well, what did you want them to do, right? Um, <laughs> it's like that. Dan, do you? Dan, you don't. At right, least he's yeah, bringing yeah, something new to a character that's been around since. Most clown of our, Hunter. I I've been enjoying Clown Hunter. Right, right, I've been enjoying Clown Hunter, and I've been really enjoying Miracle Molly. Miracle um, Molly. I think that she will end up being the new Oracle, you know, because not to spoil anything, but but we're seeing Batgirl kind of. Uh, if you guys read Joker, we saw Batgirl kind of. That's another book James Hyden's writing that we haven't really talked about. We're seeing um, mm. we're seeing Batgirl get back into the action a little bit. So I'm like. Maybe that's like a subtle thing of her saying, oh, yeah, I need to get my shit together. Miracle Molly right. comes in as Oracle. We're seeing Ghostmaker and Harley team up. So Punchline's probably going to be the villain of that. And then uh, Clown Hunter, I could see going to Bloodhaven with Nightwing. That'd be cool. I'm still holding that hope that he's Red X. It just makes so much sense. But uh, that's for another day. That is for another day. But Joker has been a great book, you know. Um, we're starting Ooh. by calling back old stories of the killing joke. We're kind of retconning Batman year one. We're telling a joker year one. And this is a very character study on Jim, Jim Gordon and how he has to, um, after years of experience with the joker, never really been able to stop him. He is tasked following the events of like even in front of no Batman secret files where like, um, or it was like that war zone issue. Yeah. It was the war zone issue and the infinite frontier one shot where, Arkham Asylum was poisoned by like this toxin. Bane was yep. killed, and Bane's Bane's daughter Vengeance, who's a new character in there, um, kind of wants repercussions for that. Um, their Court of Owls are going to be back in there, as we've kind of seen. Um, we've seen Talons come dispersely, and Jim Gordon, who is tasked, hey, you got to go kill the guy because we're going to pay you a lot of money because you're the only one who's really been able to contain him uh, more so than anyone else that's not Batman. So Jim accepts it and goes to hunt down Joker in his new paradise. Uh, him and Joker have to team up, but then they go their separate ways, and Jim has to go fight him again. And we're seeing an old Jim Gordon basically being Tom Brady and never aging. Oh, yeah, he dyes his hair red. That's just a trick. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> nah, he's like, um, I don't know if you guys ever watched Avatar The Last Airbender, but Uncle Iru, when he's about to break out of the Fire Nation prison, that's Jim Gordon <laughs> in this book. I remember the um, it was towards the end of Snyder's run, but that's kind of when I came jumped into Batman because I was like, oh, that's an interesting concept. Jim Gordon as Batman in a bat neck, but um, yeah, I just remember Gordon had like a shaved head and he was like working out. He was buff. I was like, yo, that's I kind of dug his Batman costume actually. Um. I'm a big fan of the yellow outline with the bat insignia. Right. Yeah, that's something that I wish they brought back. 100%. The new bat costume is looking very much like Batman Incorporated, which I like because yeah. I think we're getting a lot of callbacks, which is going to be by Joshua Williamson and Paco Medina. Um, I have to say, I really am a fan of the purple background. I think that adds so much to, um, especially with those backdrops, when, like, you know, Batman's maybe on a skyline or something it's like a silhouette and it's just like his cape flown in the wind right purple behind it and so much i wish come on dc bring that back please uh to kind of wrap up the show link what has what is your favorite classic tie-in story before something's killing the children 
I'm gonna have to um Batman Eternal. I I'm gonna have to go back and finish that, but that's a close second. I will say his detective comics run, hands down. Um, I'm I'm probably going detective comics too. And I have the omnibus, you know, I have so this 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 is how you know that I liked it. I have most of the floppies. Not all of them, I have most of them. I have mo I have all the trades. I have like a few trade paperbacks and then I have the third deluxe, right? Um so then I was like, oh the omnibus is here. It's sitting on my shelf. Well, I'm getting the omnibus. It looks good. Yeah, it looks good, eh? You're you know, fan, and yeah, collect it all. There's nothing wrong with that. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it, you know. So if we're telling you it's worth it, it is. Um you know, but James Tynan is a fantastic writer. Hope you guys uh, found a book in here that you guys can go back and look at. You know, Justice League Dark, great for newer readers who want to explore a different side of the DC universe that we don't really see because it's in the back of stories of a bad book. Um, and no one's going to pay six, five, six dollars for 10 pages. Um, That's or at least, at least I won't. Um, I'll wait until it's collected. But, but hey, if there's any kind of books that we did miss, Leave them in the comments. Tell us about them. I'd like to hear about them. I would. I would love to know. You know, I think we did hit them all. Um, there are definitely more to go back. You know, um, and that's the beauty of this hobby is there's always something for everyone. You know, um, and if you want to follow James Tynan as a creator, go back read his older stuff. It's worth it. His Batman is is it's great. Just like Dark, it's great. Batman, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I heard it was really fun, so I might be checking. Yeah, it out. I, I want to read that so badly, but, so I'm gonna check that out. Let us know how you guys like that because I know a lot of people read it. Um, thank you guys once again. We will see you guys next week with a brand new topic.